sometimes when you just strip back some sessions, they do tend to feel a lot better. I recently started working with another professional MMA athlete and when he sent me his schedule, I was like, man, you, you don't need to be doing five sessions a day. And five I, sessions in a day. Five sessions in a <laughs> oh day. Oh my God. We talked a lot about obviously power and strength and stuff. Now, let's use it, George, for the example. Cardio is obviously a huge part yep. um, of, of your job as well. Correct. Um, so balancing strength and the cardio strength and the conditioning side of things in the lead up to a fight like that i mean he's getting so much cardio in with his boxing training right Good so point. it's like do you like where do you come in with the cardio side of things because it's like strength work he's not really doing strength work in his boxing sessions i mean kind of if he's doing like heavy shots or whatever but yeah he's always doing cardio so how do you kind of balance that out in the lead up to like it's, a recent fight for someone like george as well my priority with me is let's always get in our lift type sessions in i'll call them lift sessions but they'd, they'd be a combination of several things depending on in camp out of camp stages yeah and with him he, he george is one of those athletes that knows himself very well and over the years he's very in tune with his own body and I don't, i'm not sure if jordy has mentioned this stuff to you either but when it comes to things like nutrition and fight week strategies a lot of the times they're quite they're quite good with themselves and they know what works for them especially at that elite level he didn't get to becoming an undisputed champion because he winged it yeah. right you refine that process every time you have another fight so for george we have a lot of communication around what to do outside of our sessions in terms of like running volume yeah high low days those sorts of things because he's he still likes running so when i first met him he did a lot more of it than he does now and he's a lot smarter running. with his training now after our conversations you're talking about running or are you talking about running yeah running yeah. Yeah. yeah um a lot of the like circuits that he was doing he was doing a lot more of it when he was younger again now he's slightly older as an athlete so he understands what's more important yeah uh that'd be in george's case with a lot of the mma athletes they don't do as much conditioning type work relative to boxes in terms of like the running and the endurance based work so I st if, if it's viable, I like to do conditioning work with my combat athletes, definitely. And depending on whether they're in camp or out of camp, sometimes it's specific work, meaning drills at certain intensities, bag work, partner-based work. And sometimes it's also non-specific. By non-specific, I mean things like using rowers, ski ergs, right. the farmer's carry, sled pushers, push-ups, etc. Yeah. So... We have different tests that we do at our facility to measure and test different aer energy systems by way of like aerobic and aerobic energy systems. And with our sports science team now, we can like establish a profile of someone and identify what we feel like they need to work on. And so we address that just like we do with their strength training. There's a saying that says, I think fatigue makes a fool of a man. Yeah. I, I can't remember who said that. Fatigue it makes cowards of us all. Lombardi, I think it was. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Uh, Vince Lombardi, I think so. So. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And it applies to combat sports a lot. So a lot of the time when I'm a, when I'm intaking and onboarding a combat athlete or a fighter or any other athlete, I ask them what they feel like they need to work on. Um, we look at like some of the last few fights and you get an idea of what that person needs to work on. Mm. So that alongside your quantitative assessment and your testing with that person, you get a good picture of, okay, let's work on these things. Yeah. So conditioning, definitely address it with all of your athletes. Like you said, uh, like a lot of the time they get adequate conditioning from their training and if they feel like they're not conditioned like i had mentioned earlier it's probably because they're doing a little bit too much in their too training much, schedule yeah. or they're under recovered they're overworking so sometimes when you just strip back some sessions and better structure things they do tend to feel a lot better um, i recently started working with another professional mma athlete and he was a perfect example of this he said i feel like i need to be doing more i, I want to be doing more sprints i want to do some hill sprints and when he sent me his schedule i was like man you really don't need to be doing more yeah. if anything why don't we prioritize the sessions that you're doing because you don't need to be doing five sessions a day he was doing five sessions on some days and five I, sessions in a day five sessions in a <laughs> oh day. my god now like i'm not exaggerating <laughs> by session more. i mean for example but how's he gonna have time to get to the hills <laughs> he'd, he'd be doing like a run in the morning and then he'd have a pad session in the morning and then in the evening he'd have three classes that's what i mean by five sessions yeah, yeah, right yeah. so he was doing that for three days of the week and i said look let's prioritize the sessions that you definitely need to make and strip some back just see how you feel after a week. And it's not me just saying this to support what I'm saying. That particular athlete in his case said he felt a lot better. Yeah. And so we just subbed some of those sessions for a conditioning type session that I thought he could benefit from and we had good success. So 
it, it always varies on the athlete. It depends if they're working full time. It depends if they're a part time athlete. It depends if they're a full time mm -hmm. athlete, um, because that then opens up more time, more yeah. availability, et cetera, et cetera. Different stresses you need to account for. Are they a laborer? Are they a student? Are they a parent? Mm -hmm. All those things.